Hi, this video is about disturbance models and PID, some features of uh, PID characteristics and how this is helping in rejecting the disturbance is what we will look into this particular lecture. And it is important to understand these disturbance models and how PID is, uh, is helping us in rejecting disturbance in order to apply in the practical systems. Uh, once we know that this is a possibility of this kind of a disturbance, then accordingly the control objectives can be set. If we look into uh, typical nature of the disturbances, one is um, uh, uh, the disturbance that is appearing at the input side and this is given by D. The other is the noise which gets added at the output of the plant. So typically uh, if, if we represent it in this way, the analysis becomes, the analysis is based on this particular representation mainly because um, the noise is prevalent at the output when you are measuring through the sensors. Similarly, disturbance is prevalent at the input side because that is where your control inputs you are applying. But in general disturbance can be, uh, can be, can be uh, appearing at any other place in the uh, system block and, and this particular signal flow block diagram and so on. But we can always uh, understand and its analysis uh, when it is prevalent at that particular place and look forward for these summers being, being uh, placed anywhere else and so on. So um, idea here is to see that where in actual plants these disturbances or noises are prevalent and see what could we do better in order to uh, design the controllers for rejecting the same. If we see um, uh, where are the changes happening into this system, we, hap we happen to change this particular uh, signal set point. So this particular set point changes something which is desirable and, and, this part, and it is typically needed in, in case of in many applications. So this is desirable factor, fine, that is something the set point change needs to, uh, to be, be, be reflected at the output um, is, is what we, we would definitely want to. The load disturbance is something that is appearing as we said at the input of the plan um, needs is typically a low frequency signal and the measurement noise which is typically appearing when we are taking the measurements is a high frequency signal and that is the reason for the nomenclature disturbance and noise just to distinguish that this particular system, this particular signal is a low frequency signal. Uh, and we characterize it as a disturbance, measurement, noise because it is a high frequency signal. And these load disturbance and measurement noises need to be rejected as compared to the set point changes that those are desirable factors, de desirable changes to appear. So typically the characteristics of disturbance if you look at, we can say that sometimes uh, this can be um, set as impulse or it can have some kind of a step, changing steps and so on and it could be a ramp or some kind of a sinusoid changing the frequency at a slow rate, phase frequency or amplitude at, at, uh, at, at very um, low uh, rates and so on. Whereas if I look at similarly this particular, uh, look at the signal how the noise appears to be uh, with respect to time, it is um, changing very, very frequently. You can see the difference between the disturbance which is appearing now and then at a very low rate as compared to the changes in the signal, uh, uh, signal when it is a noisy signal. So this is typically high frequency signal and represented as a spectral energy and, and represented as a random variable. When we look at the PID control, the PID control is, um, is given by the terms called pro proportional control, integral control and the derivative control and yes the gain term is something uh, what turns out to be um, 
be common and then we can represent in terms of the integral time constant and the derivative time constant. Here we will try to understand this particular PID structure in a slightly different way now. Uh, Let us consider the proportional action. Now what happens in case of the proportional action is that uh, if it is just the k times e of t then error is never able to be 0 because if error is 0 then u of t is 0. So in order to make this particular input non 0 when the error needs to be 0 error is our desired part is the error should be 0 because this is where the output signal is equal to the set point value. This is, this is exact uh, following of what the input is given and uh, the set point is given and exactly what is I am what I am getting as an output. Now if the error is to be made to 0 then this is not possible with the help of the proportional control and that is the reason let us let us con consider some bias to the uh, input value given such that when there, when there is E of t equal to 0 there is some constant input being given to the plan. Fine. So this particular bias is nothing but we can consider a nominal value which is between some maximum input value maximum and the minimum input values and average of the same. So this particular E of t becomes 0 at a set point alright. So let us see the effect of this particular bias term. So we already know that I, I have the particular plant output x and I can write the signal flow signal values and so on and so forth. So x turns out to be uh, kp times u plus d uh, because this is my uh, plant gain is what we have that is in terms of um, the um, steady state gain. Output y is x plus n whereas x is is equal to we, we, uh, we already have said kp is equal to u plus d and the, the controller output u is given by k times y sp minus y where k is my proportional gain. kp is my planned gain in this and k is my proportional gain and what we are applying is a proportional gain with a bias term ub. When we uh, substitute and resubstitute at and, and bring the x in terms of the uh, the output y s p we get a neater form given by this particular equation. Now we, it is interesting to see since this is an LTI system uh, this particular form is easier to, to understand that the change in the input y s p and the change in the noise input are opposite to each other because of the sign change and because the again term turns out to be same whereas the bias term that we have added as the input as the control control output term has the same effect the bias term which we have added and the as the term in the in the control input form has the same effect as the disturbance term okay with this particular observation we see that what should be the selection for this loop gain k times kp. This loop gain turns out to be giving a trade off in terms of if n if the noise is 0 the bias is 0 then it is desirable to choose a higher higher k times kp so that this term turns out to be almost unity and x follows your ysp and at the same time higher loop gain means your disturbance term is getting rejected. UB is influenced same as the distance uh, uh, disturbance and if n is not equal to 0 then we will have to use um, we will not be able to use a very large large loop gain because then the noise will also be added into the output of the plant. And therefore there is a there is a trade off between the higher loop selection of the loop gain higher loop gain is desirable for change for reflecting this um, change in the set point whereas if there is a noise in the system then higher loop gain is not desirable. And also we know that system becomes uh, normally unstable at higher loop gain. So there is anyway a cap over there uh, in order to select a particular loop gain. So design will 
will design of the controller or the design of the loop gain in this case or a bias term in this case will be dependent on which objective is more important. Maximum loop gain is of course determined by the process dynamics which is, which is coming up from the stability of the system and so on. All right. It is possible that PID is not able to achieve all the control objectives, but what is more priority is what we have to look at. All right. Let us look into few more observations from the proportional control here. When we have let us say uh, the system is very nice, it is uh, disturbance and the noise and the bias term is equal to 0, then what happens if I am having k varying values of k the step, step response is particularly um, uh, plotted in this particular figure for a transfer function with, with 3 poles at minus 1, multiple poles at minus 1. So, we can see that the when, when I am increasing k value this k equal to 1 we had a very large steady state error, but as we increase k from 1 to 2 to 5 the steady state error is decreasing. And this is where even the error plot um, uh, is, is given, but, but as we increase k there is, an, there is an introduction of oscillations and with the increase and in, further increase in the oscillations the um, uh, transients die out at a very later date, very, very later time and the system response becomes slower in this case. Now, if this, this particular steady state error is given by Ysp minus k which turns out to be Ysp by 1 plus k kp. So, increasing the value of k is definitely decreasing the error. But now what happens if my bias term ub is not equal to 0? Then this steady state error is given by Ysp minus k by ub. Now, for a 0 steady state error we will have to consider giving ub equal to Ysp by k. All right, let us see what, what comes up with the integral action in this. Now, integral action the 0 steady state means the process variable is equal to the uh, set point, y uh, process variable or process output variable is y is, equ is exactly equal to the ysp. So, what how is this getting achieved? Let us say there is a constant control input u0 at a steady state given and let us say this is corresponding to a constant error e0. Let us say, let us assume that we are assuming in this way. Now, with pi control what happens? pi control is given by uh, gain term proportional term like this and with a uh, time const integral time constant and an integral value. At a steady state u0 which is the, the control input u0 which is constant as we assumed here is given by proportional gain times E0 plus E0 by Ti times T. Now, this term is growing with time which means U0 is not a constant. Our assumption was that there is a constant error E0 and for which we are giving a constant error constant uh, control input U0. So, this particular is contradicting because this particular assumption is contradicting because now u naught is increasing with time. It means for an integral control, proportional and integral control, we cannot have a constant error e naught if a constant u naught is given. We have already reached a steady state means the con constant control, uh, control is given as u naught. It means e naught is definitely has to be 0 in order to reach to this particular uh, uh, reach to the constant control u0 value. All right. A wonderful. Um, so, in in the previous, okay. Let me go back to the previous slide. The idea about this particular bias term added to the per, added to the the uh, gain term is giving us more and more insights how the integral action is is taking taking place. So, something like this uh, bias term idea is, is very old and it has been applied in very 
uh, nice industrial control way, industrial control methods. If I have, if I implement the PI controller with this particular way, you have a key, uh, key proportional term coming out here and the integral control term is, is implemented like a, a low pass filter in a feedback loop. Of course, you can, you can derive this particular signal flow, you will get that, you will get a PI structure itself. Now the, the advantage here is that this particular integral term is appearing, appearing as a bias term and this particular bias term is being driven by the output u instead of a constant bias. And this particular implementation is that is why I called automatic reset in, in many different uh, control, um, control uh, controllers and so on, industrial controllers that are available in the market. At the same time, digitally also it is easier to implement because this term is representing your low pass filter. So any frequencies, any higher frequencies which are captured through the sensor measurements, this low frequency filter, a low pass filter is rejecting them automatically and it is getting added as an integral term. So this particular structure of implementation is that is why is very, very popular for implementing the PI term instead of simply a cascade form of proportional and integral terms. Let us all further look into the properties of this particular integral action. Uh, if I decrease the time con integral time constants from in infinity to, uh, to values equal to 5, equal to 2 and then 1, what we observe here is that for ti equal to infinity, this is simply a proportional action and that is why we have a steady state. For larger values of ti, the system is out, so the, the output response, output signal grows gradually and reaches to the, uh, the final state in a very slow manner. But for smaller ti values, we can see that this particular one reaches the steady state error value, the steady state, uh, zero steady state or the final value very fast. Uh, and after certain time, of course, the um, if we further re further decrease the uh, integral time constant, then it oscillates and then approaches this. Output reaches set point almost exponentially with time constant ti by k by ti by k times kp. Let us understand what derivative action is helping us. Our objective with the derivative action turns out to be improving the closed loop stability and how? Um, we have also looked into that derivative action turns out to be giving you the predictions. So it is giving you the faster actions. When we, let us see how it is helping in the stability form. It is because of the process dynamics. We take some time for the changes in the control to appear in the process output and therefore it is late in correcting for errors but the, with the PD controller we are having some predicted process output and it is helping us in reaching to the final value faster. Predictions are definitely made by explorate, uh, extrapolating error by tangent to the error curves. All right, Let us see what is happening here in terms of the same transfer function with k equal to 3 and ti equal to 2, the, the derivative action in the PID control, how is it helping us in reaching the, the uh, final value faster? If we see, see this particular plot, we have the time derivative, uh, time, the derivative time constant td equal to 0.1 selected, then 0.7 and then 4.5. For the um, td equal to 0.1, we were able to reach the final value with oscillations in certain time, but with introduction of a little higher TD value to 0.7, we are able to reach the system output final value um, faster. But beyond a certain point, the derivative action is giving some more oscillations and some different kind of characteristics. So there is an upper value of TD for which 
the system is going to uh, to behave for a particular p proportional and integral constant. So there is a further reduction in the, um, uh, the, uh, the settling time possible with the introduction of derivative action. So this is exactly what is being what I just saw, said increasing TD initially damp gives the increased damping but later damping decreases and then even the system response is no longer a sinusoid but rather it is more oscillatory even while approaching the final value. When we implement the derivative action this is a nice this is one way of implementing it and in terms of the feed forward way and in terms of adding the bias to the proportional controller. So this is what is the PD block uh, showing up. The forward channel this one is simply a proportional control and this part of which is implemented again with the low pass filter is giving you uh, the final form in the form of a uh, PD controller. So this transfer function turns out to be equal to ST by 1 plus ST which already has a low pass filter kind of a system already available. So the derivative actions are notorious to pass the noises which are high frequency noises and that is going to give us a lot of trouble and that is the reason derivative action is typically used with the low pass filter and this is um, a kind of implementation is very 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 popular in again in the again in the industry. Further alternative representations for the PID control implementations are discussed now. Uh, what we have is in the form of uh, controller given by the proportional gain, proportional gain, integral gain and the derivative gain. Standard or the non-integrated interacting form of the algorithm implementation is very straightforward which is given by simply the summation of proportional, integral and derivative term and which gives you the control output, uh, control, uh, control input to be given to the system or the controller output u uh, in terms of the error a. Whereas the series or the interacting form is also common or, or is also called the classical form of it where we have this particular uh, derivative term being implemented as a feed forward term along with that PI term as a bias term way uh, and here what we get is in the, in the form of a multiplicative because here is a cascade of PD and the PI, PI form the it turns out the controller can be represented can is given by the gain term multiplied by proportional and integral term and proportional and derivative term. All right. So your problem is to now represent k, t, i and t, d in terms of k prime, t, i prime and t, d prime. What are these? k, t, i and t, d are the standard or the interacting form of this. Uh, of this one can always convert it in terms of k prime, t, i prime and t, d prime. What is this exercise is helping us in understanding is that when we write this again opposite can also the vice versa can also be written and we can find the condition between t i and t d now. Now with this we should be able to say that okay when we have the transfer function of non interacting fine we will be able to find the condition when we it has complex zeros. And the complex zeros are useful for controlling the systems with oscillatory modes. So the systems which are uh, the secondary or second, second order systems and has an oscillatory modes um, prevalent then we should be able to find its solution in terms of the non interacting form. And that is the this particular exercise will help you in understanding that we will have uh, when we do this then complex zeros automatically appear and the complex zeros with the, uh, with the system uh, poles complex poles we can have some kind of a, um, cancellations happening and we will be able to do the PID control uh, of the complex zeros uh, PID sorry 
then we will be able to have the PID control of the systems with oscillatory systems. Uh, the next exercise will help you to say that okay, series form has interpretations and frequency domain as well. When we find its zeros and we will be able to show that they are real valued. Okay. Then if I consider this particular series form and represent its parallel form, the will is, is, it, is it introducing complex videos? Do this exercise when you write this k t i t i d in terms of k prime t i prime m t d prime and vice versa, you will be able to interpret these results which are given in the last two bullet points. If we look into the interacting versus non-interacting uh, form, each control loop has its own structure when we have the interacting form. We will have uh, when both i and d terms are present then these structures are different and both forms will have p can be implemented in terms of proportional, proportional integral and pd control as well. But one has to look into whether I am imp implementing in interacting and non-interacting form typically to address these oscillatory modes and so on and so forth. That is all for this. Next we will look into, next video is talking about the tuning methods for the PID control. Thank you.